And yesterday just felt like I wasn't sure of myself in my career. I wasn't sure of myself in my marriage. I wasn't sure of myself as a mom. And so it like really did a number, it's doing a number on me. April 20th, 2022. Um, yesterday was hard. Today is hard. Um, I had a good, good cry in the shower last night before I went to bed. Because, like, I feel the weight. It, it feels like the weight of the world on my shoulders. You know, I just really can't believe I've been pregnant at some point since 2018. Like, for the past four years, I have been pregnant. Which, for most of the time, has made me feel less productive than I aspire to be. Because either I'm pregnant or I'm postpartum. I literally had a, a month between stopping breastfeeding, which I, you know, I still count that as my postpartum journey with Sarai, which was 14 months. And then a month later, I get pregnant with Micah. And six months after, or six months postpartum, I stopped breastfeeding. And then two months later, pregnant with this baby. So, through a pandemic, through just life things, um, my body has been through a lot. Um, I've had to grow and stretch to be a mother, to be a wife. I became a wife in 2020, which, you know, is also difficult um and yesterday it was kind of like a culmination of really feeling down on every level um uh, feeling down as a mom because i just don't have a lot of energy right now so I'm, I know that I'm doing and being not as much as I want to be for my kids right now. I want to be up and moving and doing activities and I want to be present. And I am present, but it's not as present as I would like to be because, you know, I am stressed and I'm tired and... Um, it's also tax season, which as an entrepreneur, as a creator, is always a very stressful time because not only do I operate on net 30s and net 45s and late payments and all of those things, I realized that I've been pretty much um, doing the heavy lifting financially for my family for since... Um, 2019 2020 and because of pregnancies and you know kids uh i have had to slow down with work um i've had to adjust my work schedule um and it's not just because of pregnancy and motherhood it's also like god transitioning me god growing me in other areas and you can't create time so God needed time from my work to help me grow as a person and um, so with all that said like I don't even want to like be this honest but I will be because I feel like it's a very real thing especially like 
for a lot of us, like the pandemic really threw people off financially. And so that's the thing that really is hard is that these brands like sometimes don't have the respect. It's not their responsibility, but don't have the respect to like pay on time when it's like, this is my livelihood. This is like how I feed my family. And when you don't do your side of the paperwork on time, when I do all of my stuff on time, it can really be destructive and it can really be, it can really put me and my family in a really tough spot. And especially this time of year, like I always owe taxes. So it's like, I usually try to save and like, you know, put money to the side and all those things for this time of year specifically. But this year it just did not happen. Like we invested in our podcast. We invested in things that you know, don't have immediate returns. So it's just, you know, it's a part of business and it's a part of life um, as an entrepreneur. And so um, it's hard to like go through this sort of thing at this point because I never struggled like that in that way when I was single or like when it was just me and Mark. Um, and so to struggle like this with babies it's like a whole nother. But it's tight right now. And I... It's hard as a parent. To handle that. Especially... In the position that we're in. Because we do have a lot. Like we are so blessed in my occupation pays very well when it pays <laughs> so yeah um and then on top of that yesterday like I was a part of um a phone call slash pitch that did not go well and I didn't anticipate it not going well um I kind of walked into the situation feeling very optimistic and feeling kind of like, oh, we got this in the bag kind of thing. And I realized through the call that I was defending my career choice in a way. I was defending black and brown creators in a way that um, I'm not going to go into detail, but trying to express the real life struggles and like disadvantages of being a black and brown creator and not having exposure to brands and not having opportunities to grow and to learn and so this call was essentially us you know asking for money to invest in a program that we would be teaching uh, mid-tier and you know um, nano creators specifically in the hair space um, how to be better at what they do, getting them exposure to huge brands and teaching them how to do their work well to the point where they are super attractive to brands and have the visibility that a lot of us don't get. And... The person on the other end definitely did not care. Like, she literally used the term, this is gauche, which I don't even know what gauche means, but it felt derogatory because we had prepared, I mean, not even me, the other people that I was on the call with had prepared an incredible deck, so much research, so many numbers and analytics to show 
the disparities to show the importance of the work and this other party was like yeah all of this matters and we know this is important but like how am I going to seal this deal like financially like what makes it make sense and we're just like we're a non-profit organization trying to get get some financial support to uplift a community of creators that continuously go unseen and with all of this data and with all of these conversations because this is not the first conversation we've had like to my knowledge there have been multiple calls prior to this one so in my mind I thought we had this in the bag sort of thing and it was just very kind of like hmm clearly it's like so humid out here my hair is like getting destroyed anyway um if this is like the attitude of our partners like it just felt disingenuous and it felt um it honestly like it I mean listen when it took a turn in the sense of like I could tell that like this wasn't doing it for them um because we were asking for a substantial amount of money so I got that I get the piece that it has to make financial sense to a certain extent but the whole premise of the effort is to give back without a ton of like if you're gonna pay people for content pay people for content like it was it felt like because I asked the question specifically you know would this be more attractive if we enlisted these creators in their agreements to be a part of this project part of this cohort to you know agree to creating a certain amount of content for said brands involved uh, she said yes, but at the same time, didn't 100% say yes. So it was just like, okay, so you want to get something out of this and you want to make a show of it and you say that you care about the community, but like you want to, you're still creating a pay for content environment if we have to make these creators like work for you essentially because that removes the idea that you're giving back like <laughs> donation is like there's nothing expected in return so it doesn't make sense so I you know I gave my little spills here and there I tried I really was fighting for my community like us And it just felt like she did not care. So that essentially made me feel like, damn, like I'm so passionate. I, I live this life. I've lived it for years. And for someone to just like not care, uh, that was a very hard, like pill to swallow in a moment where I thought, we were good like I thought that like this was kind of just a wrap-up kind of you know we we good we just need to see the specifics like kind of conversation yeah um and it just felt like very um dismissive so that sucked because I know the difference that mentorship and education can do for someone as a career creator. It was the, that's the game changer of my platform is that along the way I have had people, I have had opportunities who have poured into me and taught me how to be a professional and taught me how to advertise and market not just myself but to market and products but to market from a genuine place from my own voice and how to have confidence in that that is something you really need to learn like most people don't have that because it's not a natural thing it, 
it's just not usually natural. And I think for most people, they need encouragement. They need guidance. And that's what we were just trying to give and do for people. And so I left that call just feeling like, man, I, God, come on and, and upgrade us so I can be the one to give the money. <laughs> So I can be the one to like invest because like we don't need these people like we don't need the we don't need people who like just want to claim that they support diversity and claim that they like care and like throw money but like actually don't do it like don't care like listen don't care and give us the money that's fine because we can work with that but like to say that you care but then you have nothing to back that up with except Oh, this is cute. This is gauche. Yeah, like, no. Like, y'all. So, this isn't as much pregnancy talk as it usually is. But, um, oh, the other thing that really sucked yesterday was Mark communicated with me that, you know, he needed some intimacy from me and that's that's something that you know I feel like I'm always like trying to catch up with because he's a man and I understand his needs as my husband and there are you know wifely duties that I have but y'all like pregnancy and postpartum breastfeeding all of that does a real number on you and my sex drive is not close to his at this point. So I try to show up for him. And I believe that I'm doing a good job in that arena. But it just feels like when I think that we're on a good path and like we're on a good schedule, it's not enough. And then he lets me know that it's not enough. And I just crumble because it's like, I can't do anything right. Like at least I used to feel very sure of myself when it came to my career. It's doing a number on me. So I'm just like, God, can we turn this in a different direction? Can we just get over this part? I have people to support and not even just my own family, but like, I want to employ people. I want to help people feed their families. I want to do things that don't just bless Mark and my family, but bless other people, help them elevate in their lives. And I know some people may think, oh, just like worry about y'all because like that's all you can handle right now, clearly. But it's like, no, I know. Like what God has for us coming is so much bigger than just us. But it's hard to be in this position where it's like not here yet. So I'm just trying to be honest about where I'm at and what it's really like. Because fighting the temptation to work harder, fighting the temptation to strive for something that's out of alignment with what God has called us for, like, y'all, I could be doing so many things that would alleviate <laughs> our financial issues or whatever, and not issues, challenges. But I know that God is 
specifically called us to a, a certain things in this season and we can't fix it he's our provider he is our our source and we don't want to step out of our obedience and so he's not telling me to go work harder he's not telling me to do more so it's like okay god you're not telling me to do more but like <laughs> It's looking a little a little sketchy out here. But just trying to trust him and timing and all of that. So that's my check-in for today. Micah is probably awake at this point. So I'm going to go check on him. He was sleeping. And take care of my baby. And try to have a better day than how this morning has been and last night. And he told this thing, this animal, what to do. And he told all of this stuff. But when he created humanity, me and you, he said, this is my most perfect creation. I need to put my DNA on it.